I'm in the middle of theory crafting teams for Sand Devil, and I just did this on Sand Devil 25, and it took almost 40 minutes to do. I didn't optimize anything, I kind of just threw them both in together. I'm gonna go over everything, but first I'm gonna try and uh, redo a few things here. I think what I'll try first is actually placing some presets, because I went in without presets. So let's go ahead and do um, Aniri, and then we'll throw in Podrick. And should I have Podrick in the lead? What do you guys think? Would that help? Would that be a, a better thing to... No, because of the positions. Positions matter. Because Aniri needs to be in position number one. Or the leadership position. Aniri needs to be in the leadership position. Podrick has to be in position number one. We're going to go in without any food and i'll explain why in a bit but i think we're okay with just turning off this skill and only worrying about wild uh, weird spores and we'll just go in like this sand devil 25 let's go ahead and do this and we'll see how how long it takes so the idea is grand oak podrick is going to get revived and then with his a2 he is not only able to um restore max hp which means aniri doesn't even need to have a blessing uh, assuming you can get these stats again this is an end game dungeon but it is scalable and so i was actually theory crafting this team with um havoc who commented down below, he said there's only a few days left to get Podrick's 5-star blessing, and he was talking about using Podrick in the Sand Devil 25. He says if you have 5-star, 5-6-star uh, five Brimstone blessing on Podrick, that would be your source of damage. His A2 will fully restore your max HP with his ally attack move. So the way it would work is after the big wipe, Aniri is going to revive Podrick, resetting the A2, and you see this destroyed max HP here? Podrick is going to heal that and so that effectively would mean that and there's the heal max hp restored that would mean that aniri doesn't actually need to have her blessing now i don't know if it's true but again this is all just theory crafting with the way that podrick's skill works it seems to be the case that we wouldn't even need to have a blessing on her uh, i only recently just got this blessing on Aniri, by the way. But he should be ready to deposit the Brimstone while clearing everyone's max HP, making Miracle Heal not relevant. I said it was an interesting concept. Now, Havoc said he tested him out and he works great to replace the 5 star Awakening requirement on Aniri. He says his regen gear isn't there yet and he doesn't have Podrick built, he just kind of threw some garbage speed gear on him, but he was able to do stage 17 for the first time. And so I, I was telling him that, you know, I did, I was working on testing out this team and the last run took me a, a good like 40 minutes to do, but at no point did it ever come close to failing. The issue here, uh, I haven't really fine tuned anything like I said, is that he's not placing, or Podrick is not placing his brimstone procs. Now the Sand Devil, let me show you guys right here, the Sand Devil does need an accuracy requirement of 525. So on stage 7, you only need 200. On stage 11, you only need 260. And stage, I think, 16? I'll, I'll show you 16 and 17. 16, you need 345. 17, you need 365. And then for stage 24, you need 505. The Sand Devil has a resistance of 500. He would need to build Podrick with 525 accuracy in order to place Brimstone. I do have the five star blessing for Brimstone. I went for him. If you haven't seen that video, I summoned for him. I think it was the last video before this one. Yeah, so you need 525 accuracy to place Brimstone even at five stars. The good thing about this is Podrick with a five star blessing with Brimstone is that when he does proc the Brimstone, it's going to pop up here and it's going to be protected, which means that the Sand Devil cannot cleanse it because the way that the mechanics for Sand Devil works is that he is going to cleanse any of the debuffs. But for some reason, he kind of keeps an extra HP burn for another turn uh, when you do pl uh, place HP burns. But uh, for Brimstone, because it's protected, he's not going to clear it. And so that's what is making this really nice. Un unfortunately, Podrick is only able to place it whenever he's attacking, and it's only a 60% chance. So, uh, you know, that, that kind of turns into a problem when we're trying to be consistent. This is 
stage 25, as I was uh, trying to say before I got sidetracked, maybe 25 isn't exactly where you want to be quite yet or where you can get to because Aniri is built kind of in an end game build. I don't think most people can acquire this and that's just me being real. Uh, again, I'm one, I've been playing for five years, two, I'm pay to win. So there's a, there's a huge dissonance. But if you can do this, then that's great and now you have a, a future reference. But as you can see, the brimstone is not proccing. Now maybe my speed tunes aren't correct, but uh, I'm just trying to theory craft here and see uh, you know, what teams we can try to put together. If you guys have any recommendations, please let me know. Okay, so there it is. Brimstone just proc. It's protected. So you need 525 accuracy. It finally landed and it's not going to be cleansed. So there it is, 367 finally from the Brimstone. So when it does proc, it's awesome. Unfortunately, even with a five-star blessing, it still takes a while for it to happen. I don't think it matters too much because Grand Oak Podrick is coming back right when he needs to come back, just in time to hit the Sand Devil. So I don't even know if the speed tunes for Podrick really matter because I've, I've even done uh, Sand Devil 25 with other champions. So Aniri in combination with like um, Farrakhan and the Fat, Walking Tomb Drang, Podrick, Ninja, and the speeds seem to vary for all of those champions, so I don't think it really matters. I think the only, oh, there it is, another smite proc. And yeah, it's awesome whenever whenever it does happen. So I think it, it really did help to turn off his A3, because sometimes when uh, the Sand Devil was sleeping, he would use A3 effectively wasting a turn or wasting an opportunity to place Brimstone. This team doesn't fail, and I think that's pretty cool. I guess if you really wanted to <laughs> do Sand Devil 25, because you want those Chaos Ores, yeah, and you don't have any other options, but you can do this specific build and only this specific build, you know, farm it overnight or I don't know. I, I don't know. The last run was what, 30, 40 minutes, basically. So one run per one hour. Uh, I don't I don't know. And then when it comes to trying to be most efficient with your energy, stage seven is going to be the most effective stage to farm if you're looking for lesser oils. Stage 24 is the most effective for greater oil farming and stage 25 is going to be the most effective for superior oil farming. Let's not stop there. Let's go ahead and take a look at this cool analysis that I found on Reddit by Cosmos. And so he highlights these specific stages, 7, 11, and then 15. Uh, but he also goes a little bit more in depth talking about how uh, difficult it is, the, the damage. And he's, he's pointing out that seven stage 7 will cost you 10 energy and you're gonna have a 7.4 chance to get lesser oils. And after running 10,000, uh, or after spending 10,000 energy, you're going to end up with 7,000, on average, you'll end up with 7,460 if you ran stage seven. And then if you ran stage 11, you have uh, an 8.79% chance of getting the lesser oils and only a 0.25 to get the greater. You're not going to get superior at this point yet. But you're going to be getting 7.325 and then 208 on average for the greater oils right here per 10,000 uh, energy. Stage 15 will grant you almost 9% of a drop rate for lesser oils, almost 1% for greater. You're still not getting superior oils, but you're getting 6,000 here and then 579. And then he points out here, going from stage 16 and above, the difficulty jumps extremely high and I have to agree with that. And then he points out this right here at the bottom that the best place to farm for superior oil to get the highest drop rates oil per run at 1.32. And then over here, lesser oils, you have a 3.69 and then greater oils, you have 2.64 is stage 25 cost you 20 energy per run. Say goodbye to your oil because now we have super raids on a daily basis. But per 10,000 energy, you're going to probably end up somewhere with 660 superior oils. 1,320 greater oils and then 1,845. The higher you can go for any dungeon, usually the better. I think maybe there is an argument to be said about when it comes to the dungeon drop rates for normal. So for an example, the drop rates for six star legendary gear is 13% on stage 25. Stage 24 has a 12%. So there's only a 1% difference. Those are the only dungeons I can think of 
where the difference is so minuscule. On top of that, this is a little outdated in the sense that this does not consider the chaos dust. This is a, a one year old post. Back then, we didn't have chaos dust. But now chaos dust and the, the, the dust for the Phantom Shogun have been introduced and it makes the um, Ascension dungeons that more so important to do because you have the ability to uh, rework your gear as many times as you want. Okay, so we did it. We saved a little bit of time, maybe shaved off like five-ish minutes, and we saved about 200-ish turns by turning off his A3 with the presets. It still takes a long time. Let's see what we can do. I also wanted to, because uh, I said I would talk about it, I wanted to mention don't put food in this specific composition. The reason is because Podrick is tanky and he's not going to die immediately like any of the any of the other champions that I've thrown in here. And because he's not going to die, Aniri is naturally going to try and revive somebody else because they're moving fast enough to do so. Maybe if you speed tune properly, things might be a different story, but I wouldn't bring food in for this run. I actually did test it and then it it failed within like a minute. Let's go ahead and try this same team in other stages. So what were the stages that were mentioned? It was like 7, 11, 15 or something like that. Let's see how this team works or how it performs, I should say, uh, against the Sand Devil on stage 7. Because I know a lot of people are wondering how to climb up into the higher stages and maybe this is a helpful way to do so. Okay, so we have Brimstone that finally procced. I think it would be difficult to try and speed tune Podrick with this specific composition. The, the thing is, I, I want to keep him in a relentless set. So if I were to speed tune him and try to like fine tune everything, in a relentless set it wouldn't work because there's just too much RNG involved and it would be inconsistent. Plus, uh, I do think I have other masteries that affect his turn meter and I don't want to change that because I don't want to have to pay the gems or like redo uh, certain things just to try out the sand devil but I'm going to use him in like Hydra I'm going to test him out in some of the other other dungeons I, I've been using him to farm hard fire knight 10 so if you if you haven't seen that video that's a huge video uh like a, a, a damn near two minute run for hard fire knight 10. okay so this particular stage was a four four and a five minute run took about 150 turns. Let's go ahead and try stage 11 since that was a highlighted stage. And same team, same setup. Let's go ahead and run this and then I'll get back to you at the end again. Okay, and we see that stage 11 was done in about seven minutes and 46 seconds, 248 turns, but it still got done. This is still an okay time for stage 11, I think. And let's go ahead and do stage 16 as well since that or let's do 17 because that's when when you're able to start getting the superior oils so let's do stage 17 and see what happens guys i i messed up i i was actually in the middle of editing this video that i'm talking to you guys about right now and i came back and i clicked on raid after the run was done and i pressed spacebar because that's what i need to pr click press and play during my edits and it accidentally clicked out of the screen. But trust me when I say stage 17 completed it with Podrick and Aniri at about 22, 23 minutes. But I want to go ahead and try something else. Let's take out the blessing for Aniri and let's try putting something else that has no effect on the Sand Devil. And let's really test to see if Podrick makes it so that we don't actually need a Neri at a five star blessing. Best way to negate the effects of emergency heal is to remove the artifact that she is using to heal. So this is the shield, we're just gonna take it off, replace it with something. I think if I mess with the speeds, it's gonna change things 259. I think we'll be okay. Let's just take it off. We'll take it off and we'll see uh, what happens if we can still do 25 without the relatively big effects of having emergency heal because right now we're healing by three percent of her max hp every single time her shield removes or or gets removed or expires or it's broken by an enemy attack so that adds to healing it's off let's go ahead and do another stage 25 run just to see if having a blessing on an airy uh really matters because the whole idea of doing this is to see whether or not Podrig negates the need for Aniri to have a blessing so let's go ahead and do that 
granted she does get it like a stat boost from uh doing doing this but i mean you can check out my other videos prior to this like i i just got this blessing for neri and you can confirm on on those videos uh some of them uh the ones that use specifically this Aniri, there was no blessing on that one and i was still able to do this well enough yeah so as you can see we're still able to do it and Aniri did not have any of the effects from her blessing come into play and we can go ahead and verify that i'm just going to show you guys that Aniri again still doesn't have the blood shield ring that was giving an effect to her to use the emergency heal blessing on her and while we're here let's go ahead and take a look at everybody's builds um well first let's go ahead and put this shield blood shield ring back on aniri here are the pieces of gear that i have for aniri she is in region and defiant she's wearing a region set and a defiant set and we're mainly prioritizing survivability stats i've done a few videos talking about this already but the regen set helps her so that she's healing by 15% of her max HP every single turn. And keep in mind that whenever the Sand Devil is destroying your guys' max HP, your characters will be healing by that much less. And that's why it's important to try and get Miracle Heal on Aniri or even uh, Emergency Heal. But I think Miracle Heal is the one that restores destroyed max HP. Podrig, with his skill, makes it so that you can actually do this without having your max hp renewed i guess there was no real point in me taking off the shield if that wasn't going to affect the destroyed max hp eh, i'm getting sidetracked the point is um when you have more destroyed max hp you're going to be healing a lot less that's also why i have her in a defiant set you can either run Godseeker in Regen and Defiant, or Regeneration and Immortal. Either or works, it just kind of depends on what you have avail available to you. But here are the total stats for Aniri. 74k, 4600 defense, 259 speed, and that's all you care about. Obviously, the higher you go, the better you want to find a good balance of HP and defense ratio as well. And that's also why uh, Defiant set's really good, because you get extra defense and damage mitigation 15% from aoe attacks and the sand devil does aoe attacks but he's going to hit you uh, less hard so that your max hp doesn't get destroyed too much if you do run regen and immortal aniri uh, let me show you these pieces of gear just in case you might be curious and you want to have a reference for that i'll show you all my pieces of gear for that again it's the same thing you want to get the right speeds and you want to make sure you have high hp and defense here are the stats on this one. She has higher HP, higher defense, and she's going slower. That was for a different Sand Devil and Yuri comp. But back to the one that we're using for this video. These are the skills. It's important to note that for this specific comp, you can only have two books on the A3 and two books on the passive. That's just the way it works. It's going to be a little bit tricky to get specifically only here and specifically only here but if you're lucky enough to do that then kudos to you if not there are other videos out there with fully booked aniris and if i come up with something more then i'll share that with you guys but but yeah i've, I've done other videos with fully booked aniris by the way so just go ahead and, and search that up here are the masteries for aniri as always do not blindly copy masteries but go ahead and blindly copy uh these masteries we're going down the defense tree for resistance and this is important to note improved parry oftentimes crit hits will kill you but if you can reduce the damage the multiplied damage because you're getting hit with a crit rate or a crit hit eight percent is huge in fact it's more than five obviously from blast proof which decreases damage received from aoe attacks whether it's a crit hit or normal but it's usually the crit hits that matter most so we go with improved parry Sand Devil does heal. We're going to take Shadow Heal on top of that. Resurgent. Um, well, I guess let me talk about this. Resurgent to remove any or have a chance to remove a random debuff if we ever lose a quarter of our max HP in one hit. Delayed Death is going to add damage reduction up to 6%. Then we're going to take Counterattack Masteries here, but that's not too relevant. I just put those there. This isn't too relevant either. Uh, there was just nothing else for me to take. We're taking extra HP on the support side, extra heals extra heals this is spirit haste uh, it doesn't really apply here because we're not going into this run 
with food because Podrick is that tanky where he's not going to die uh, so much and we don't want Aniri reviving other champions. But you could run food and that's why, or you could run Sand Devil 25 with a different champion with food and that's why I have Spirit Haste on her so that she gets that 24 point boost and we're taking extra HP. If you need extra HP, we'll take Elixir of Life. And let's go ahead and talk about the main man himself, Podrig. I recently just got the blessing for him. Let's talk about it. This is a Grand Oak Podrick built in a Relentless set. The aim of this build is to make him go as fast as possible whilst maintaining high accuracy. And we'll talk about that here, the pieces of gear. So he has a decent amount of HP, a decent amount of defense. Actually, I'll be honest with you, I am pay to win, five-year player, end game. I know some of you guys are going to say these are pretty high stats comparatively and i realize that now that i've been playing my free-to-play series again this is not the easiest thing to to get for this specific build in relentless but you know if you can get him in relentless that's cool if you can't get him relentless that's fine too you just want to make sure he has a decent amount of survivability uh, ability i was running him with like well, let me show you this real quick when I, when I went into the optimizer to build him here, HP and defense, that's what I'm looking for for priorities, but I mostly cared about him going fast. So he's got speed on him and then he's got accuracy because the Sand Devil requires 525 minimum accuracy. I didn't want to go too high on top of that for now. So I maxed out at 525. I'm just showing you guys this in case you do use the optimizer. I am going to use Podrick in other areas of the game. So that's why I'm going to leave him in a relentless set i did not want to take him out of a relentless set but uh, again stats over sets it's more important that you get the stats but you could put him in like a speed set or perception set whatever helps you get to where you need to go that's all you need so we talked about high hp high defense high speed i want him to take as many turns as possible so that he's doing his ally protect more often and he's keeping those buffs up we'll talk about his skills in a bit 549 accuracy he was exactly at 525 but with enchantments that I got, he got a little more accuracy. He's also getting boosts from the blessing. He's got the, he has the five star blessing, but that's all that really matters here. Resistance helps out quite a bit, especially when it comes to doing Hydra, but I wasn't too worried about it. I don't think, um, I still have to play with him in Hydra. I haven't played with him in Hydra yet. The main thing for his skills that we want to pay attention to is his A2. It does an ally attack, but that's not what's important here. It's the fully restoring all allies destroyed max HP. The only other champion in raid currently, as of March of 2024, that does that is Marishka. So Padrig is able to fully restore destroyed max HP so that everybody can, or Aniri, and he can heal to their full potential. Then he places continuous heals, keeping everybody alive. And that's all we really care about. This, all this other extra stuff is, is cool, but we don't actually need it. And Brimstone. So the thing about Brimstone, you have the chance to place a smite debuff, but this, so this will do a, a huge amount of damage and that's the main source of damage when we're talking about doing Sand Devil. You need to know, this still requires accuracy. You still need accuracy. You get all of these extra buffs, and even, even at 5 star, you still only have a 60% chance to place it. And even if that first check pops off, even after the first check, which is the 60% chance check, um, passes, you still need high accuracy to pass the second check. And if both of those checks pass, then you're going to place smite. It's going to be a protected smite, so it can't be removed by the sand devil. So again, the two checks, 60% check, and then the high accuracy check, which is 525. And the only time you don't need accuracy is if I were to get a six star blessing for Padraig. And I think I, if I see it in the shop, I might get it. It's it's like 300 of the gold eternal um, soul stones or whatever they're called. But you also uh, get a 15% or a 15 point boost. You also get a 15 point boost to uh, getting a blessing for Padre. Here are the masteries. Again, it's very much similar to Aniri's because I am going to use them in other content. So we're taking the Shadow Heal for extra heals, extra heals, improved parry, we talked about it, extra res, resurgent for the chance to remove a debuff. He does place buffs on the entire team, so we're taking extra ally res, which is really helpful, especially going into a Hydra battle against um, uh, the Head of Mischief. 
damage mitigation, cycle of revenge, so he's getting a turn meter boost. Uh, that doesn't really come into play when it comes to the Sand Devil, but I'm just showing you guys and talking you through it, why I chose certain things. Rapid response to, so that he can take more turns. Cycle of magic to have a chance to reduce the cooldown of a random skill. Last thing, gifts, because he's placing... Every time he takes a turn, he's placing buffs. Uh, Spirit haste, same reason as Aniri. If somebody dies or if the whole team dies, he's going to move a lot faster. We're taking timely intervention for tier 6 because if any of my champions has their health drop below 25%, he's going to get a boost to his own turn meter so that he can take a turn a lot faster and maybe even restore some extra HP or do whatever he needs to do. Now, if you did not go for Grand Oak Podrick, that's okay because there's other teams you can build for Sand Devil 25 and I've got two of them right here.